Golf Central on YouTube. Brought to you by Apex Irons from Callaway. Hello, I'm Anna Whiteley. Always delighted to be alongside Amanda Blumenhurst. Coming to you from Atlanta Athletic Club, this is your Golf Central update. Well, round two of the KPMG Women's PGA Championship saw Nelly Corder tie the lowest 18-hole score in championship history with a 9-under 63. So she goes into moving day with a one-stroke lead over Lizette Salas, who shot back to back 67. She was also your round one leader, Celine Boutier, with an impressive uh, second round of 64 as well. But today belonged to Nelly Corder, and here's what she had to say after her round. Actually, the one on 17, number eight, was a highlight of my round. I, I pushed my drive really outright, and uh, I was near a route, so I wasn't even sure if I could hit it. Um, thankfully I hit just the top of it. You know, it's so scary when you have those types of shots and to drain a long putt was nice too. Awesome. I'm going to, I'd like to, if you can talk through those last six putts, what you are last six birdies, excuse me, uh, what you had in, in the clubs, if you can remember all that starting yeah. with, uh, on number four, the par three. Yes. The par yeah, three. So I had a little seven in, I hit it just past. I hit an arrow at the pin. I flew it by a little, probably had like 20 feet and just crept in from the side on the left. And then the next hole, I had a seven wood in. I actually lipped out for eagle there. And then the next hole, I hit it on the green with my seven wood. Also missed my eagle putt. <laughs> then I hit a five iron into that par three. Um, it was pretty close. I had probably like five feet downhill, rolled that one in. And then the next hole... I had a long one. I don't even know how far that was. And then on the last hole, that was a controlled pitching wedge. And I just hit it over the pin, probably had an eight footer down the hill, left to right. And it's a 63 after opening with a bogey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? I uh, just shook it off. I, it was a poor second shot into the green and poor chip too. So I knew that there was a lot of golf out here. I knew that Jason, he scouted the golf course, knew a lot of the holes were pushed up so I could get there in two and just told myself, I'm going to make a lot of, I'm going to make bogeys this week. So was Jason giving you good advice throughout all this? Yeah, I think he was, he, he was a little shocked too. He was like, <laughs> I think we both blacked out a little there. <laughs> I'll take it. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll open it up for questions. We'll start here with Beth Ann and then work our way down. Yeah, you said earlier in the week that you felt like you'd been hit by a truck. I guess you got your energy back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did, definitely. I think, honestly, it also helps to have a crowd here. Like, at um, when I won in Nona and then I went to Ocala, I was just so tired there. Like, I honestly didn't have any energy. And I feel like when the crowd is here, you know, they get behind you, they kind of give you a lot of energy as well. Yeah, it has been awesome having the fans back here at Atlanta Athletic Club. And Amanda, I mean, she's coming off a record tournament low win at the Maya. She shot a career low round 62 last week on Saturday. She's now come out here and shot 63. How is she tapping into this sort of zone that she's found? Well, I love how she said both the, she and Jason, her caddy, just kind of blacked out at one <laughs> point. I mean, it really, it's been fun to watch. She said that it's fun to be playing, that it seems just easy right now, which isn't always the case uh, when it comes to golf. And we saw her struggles at the U.S. Open just a few weeks ago. So for her to be able to turn it around and then win at the Meyer LPGA Classic and then follow it up because that can be very exhausting just the media attention that you're having to deal with and and coming off of a win but we've seen her play just great golf I mean round one was very solid but then today with 10 birdies only one bogey uh, she hit only six fairways but with her strength the rough isn't very thick right now she was able to power through it and uh, we give a lot of credit to her length the uh, number 10 in distance on the LPGA tour so taking advantage of the par fives that have been moved up the uh, number six the uh, par four was now only 229 yards so she took advantage of those but then also she's ranked eighth on tour in putts and greens and regulation so she has a beautiful short game and so paired together you can see why she would shoot a 62. Mm -hmm. Yeah I mean there really are no holes in her game at the moment but she will head out tomorrow with a one-stroke lead over Lizette Salas, who has gone out and shoot back-to-back -back rounds of 67. Really impressive stuff, where she joins our very own Amy Rogers. Lizette, back-to-back -back 67s to start the week here. At one point, you led by three this afternoon. Were you following at all what Nellie Corda was doing on the leaderboard? 
Not really. I um, I was looking at it, but I was just focused on my game plan and um, what I needed to do for the day and got off to a great start on that front nine and um, try to keep it going on the backside. But you know what? I'm still bogey free and, and I feel pretty solid going into the weekend. Yeah, you're still in great position. How are you handling being in this position in a major championship? I think I'm handling it quite well. Um, yesterday was, uh, I don't think my phone has blown up that much in a very long time. And um, But I spoke with my team yesterday and um, we just, my coach told me to play as if it was round one. So there you go. I gave him uh, another minus five and um, just really proud of how I held it together. You mentioned your phone blowing up. You opened up yesterday about some of the anxieties and struggles that you've been having over the last year. What sort of reactions have you got from people? Oh, nothing but positivity. And even while I was going through that tough time, a lot of players reached out. Um, total, total support from my community, my family, everyone. So I definitely felt a lot of love yesterday. And, and uh, so just trying to keep that confidence going and um, all positivity from here on. Seeing the low scores and how aggressive everyone's been over these first two days, what will be your strategy this weekend? Just play Lizette boring golf. It's, um, I think it's working quite well, and I, I don't think I need to do anything extravagant. Um, I think just kind of go over what happened these last two days and see how I can improve, and um, I think all in all just staying patient is going to be the game plan. Nice start to the week. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. It's all about playing boring golf. That's exactly what Jordan Spieth references as well. Just fairways and greens, fairways and greens. But this is a great story for Lizette. She said she's sort of on the road to loving Lizette again. She opened up about her mental health struggles over the last 12 months or so, sort of losing her identity. So to come out and look so confident out there is really impressive. It is, we haven't seen very much from her in the last couple of years of good play. The last time she won was back in 2014. And it's that really just consistent, uh, play that she's been having. Uh, looking back even to the last tournament at Meyer LPGA Classic where she finished sixth, since then, uh, the final round, she has not had a bogey in 53 holes. So she is playing boring golf, hit 18 greens in regulation today. And uh, it seems really like she's not, obviously she's a veteran on the tour and she acts like that. You know, even though she hasn't had a ton of success recently, she seems so calm out there. Yeah, she's a four-time straight uh, Solheim Cupper as well for the U.S. And we know that is a big source of motivation for her this week, trying to move up in those standings. Uh, well, Amy also reported today, having spoken to Shan Shan Feng, the 2012 champion of this championship, she missed the cut this week, but she mentioned that she's considering walking away from the game. She's going to go away and she might be back. Now, this is a big loss for the LPGA because she's such a huge character and we don't have many big personalities in golf. Are you surprised to hear that announcement? I'm very surprised. I thought she actually would play until you had to physically drag her off the golf course because she is so fun and relaxed. And I love the cow print pants that she said she wears because it makes her giggle that she <laughs> enjoys it. And it's not a fashion statement. And so we're going to miss little quotes from Chan Chan like that. Uh, and she's been playing well. So she finished fourth at the U.S. Open, finished fourth in match play, uh, finished tied for third at the Anna Inspiration. So I'm kind of surprised. You know, yes, she missed the cut here, but she's been putting some good golf together. So we're going to miss her personality and also her good play. Yes, there will be a very big Shan Shan Feng hole left on the LPGA Tour, if that is the case. Uh, but if it is Shen Shen, we wish you all the best of luck with everything that you go and do in your career. But we hope to see you back soon. All right, that was your Golf Central update. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.